What's going on? Welcome to another episode of Crime Pays, but Botany doesn't. We got a soundtrack today. It's the uh, Quesada Gigas, the Giant Cicadas, near and dear to my heart. I really do appreciate how obnoxious they are, especially since so many people don't appreciate them and are annoyed by them. Anyway, today we're going to be looking at some really interesting species in the genus Aristolochia, which is the genus of pipe vines. In Texas, you got plants like Aristolochia erecta. In California, you got the California pipe vine, Aristolochia californica. Aristolochia tomentosa grows on the Midwest and East Coast. Down here, we got some of the tropical ones. These plants temporarily trap flies and beetles inside their ornate flowers, very unique looking flowers, and uh, force them to pollinate them. They trap them for a day or two, let them out, and then trap more of them. So let's check out what they do right here. Now this right here is Aristolochia leucanura. You can see there's the, this, this whole thing is the vine. Most Aristolochias are vines. Here's the flower. Again, it does look like a little pipe. The fruit is inside that base, but it's not mature yet. It will be, it'll start maturing once it's pollinated. You can see they've got this speckling pattern on uh, the perianth right there. It kind of looks like uh, some sort of rotting meat or flower, and that's because it's attracting fly pollinators. They fly in this tube, and then the tube has little hairs on the inside that temporarily traps the flies after a day or two. Those tubes, those uh, hairs on in the inside of the tube wither, and it lets the fly out. Inside of this is a little column. That column is uh, facultatively female first. It's receptive to pollen. The anthers, which produce pollen, and they mature after the uh, female part is pollinated. It's a, they do it, they break it up. It's a bisexual flower, but they break up which sex is uh, operative at which time as a way to avoid self-pollination. You can see there's the leaves up there. All Aristolochia leaves have the same general flower shape and the same general leaf shape, those kind of heart-shaped vine leaves. And stepping over here to variations on a theme, we got another Aristolochia species. This one a little bit more ornate. This is Aristolochia ringens. Still looks like a pipe. Still got this perianth. Actually, this is not a mature flower yet. It hasn't opened. Let's find a mature one. There you go, there's a mature flower, look at that. So this is open, you can see those little hairs, they go all the way down the floral tube, you can see they're pointing downwards, preventing any insects from crawling out, but it's only a temporary trap. I guess if you're at the end of the, your life, you could die in there, but you can see all the little flies hanging out inside that large floral tube. We also got this uh, little hood right there to help get those little bastards in there. Again, inside, like right up here, right at the top of that uh, inflated tube is the gynostemium, it's the column again. The stigma is the female part, it's receptive to pollen. If this flower just opened, then it's uh, they're female first. They're protogynous or protogynous is the word for that, just like uh, many of the aeroids. So, so protogynous, female first, and then uh, after getting pollinated, again, hopefully by a fly that's carrying pollen from another plant or another flower with it when it goes into that floral tube that pollinates. You see, little guy's trying to get out, you can't get out because those hairs, those hairs wither, they'll wither in a day. Just sit tight, be patient. So that uh, fly will carry pollen, pollinate the, uh, the female part of the gymostemium, and then after that, pollen matures on the anthers, and, uh, and then this will open again. More flies will continue to fly in there. More flies will continue to fly in there, pick up the pollen, and then fly off to another flower. That's Aristolochia ringens. Look at that, very ornate, but it seems to work. And these are located more towards the base. The branch that these are on and the angiosperm evolutionary tree are more towards the base. They're in Piperales. Aristolochiaceae is the family. Order is Piperales. Cava and Piper and Peperomia are in that order too. Look at that though. It feels like rubber. The whole flower itself kind of feels rubbery. And then you got those hairs. But again, all this just to attract flies. And that's a common thing you see that pattern, that mottling on many fly pollinated plants, many plants that are pollinated by diptera. It's just whether, you know, unrelated plants converging on the same theme. Apparently this is what it takes to attract flies. It probably resembles rotting meat or rotting fruit, either or. And then there's the, there's the, uh, what the fruit looks like. Oh, very waxy. Like so many plants in uh, Costa Rica, these sub, these tropical latitudes. I'm literally wiping the wax off with my fingers. 
and this thing will be hissed it'll split open like yay and release a bunch of tiny flaky black seeds like yay but see these have already lost all their seeds so this this split open already come on guys get up we got to get the flies out of here i'm trying to take a collection here <laughs> trying to trying to press this thing everybody out you can just get we, the fly with it there we go get everybody out get out get out of there oh christ they're all oh, i killed some i'm sorry guys now get out 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 Ooh, are there beetles in there too does this have a specifist pollinator this species hey get out come on Go we'll find another flow. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, victim of the game. And then variations on a theme. You can see we got another Aristolochia species here. This is Aristolochia gigantea. These flowers have not fully opened yet. They're just inflated little bags. That one has opened, as you can see up there. It looks quite grotesque, but also somewhat lovely. It's like one of those things you can't really stop yourself from looking at. And you can see this thing goes all the way up this tree. Here's a uh, one of the flowers up close. You can see it's got a uh, swallowtail caterpillar in the background. Lots of swallowtail butterflies. There's a couple different species use Aristolochia as a host plant because of the Aristolochic acid, the toxic, uh, the semi-toxic compound that it has in the leaves. It's toxic. It's, you know, it's not going to make you die if you eat it. Well, you know, to be honest, I've never tried, but uh, I don't know. Feel free to go ahead if you feel like checking out. Uh, anyway, just don't sue the channel, okay? Uh, but you can see those massive flowers up there. And again, if you were to cut this open, I mean, look at that thing. That is really grotesque. It looks like, you know, it looks like rotten meat, you know? It looks like roadkill. But if you were to cut that flower open with a little uh, razor or a knife or something, out would come a bunch of flies. Maybe we should do it. No, not really. It looks like, uh, it looks like everybody dipped out already. You can see those hairs withered a little bit. They're uh, senescent, and everybody was able to crawl out. Those downward pointing hairs point towards the camera when the flies are in there and prevent the flies from leaving. And then up there, there's a gynostemium. This, this is an old flower that the uh, ovary has already been pollinated, and that will mature into a capsule fruit with a bunch of tiny seeds in it. Sorry, guys. Sorry I took your meal. You could probably still finish eating this and get the, get what you need to it. You know, you can bioaccumulate that aristolochic acid. There you go. See, we cut this open. Nobody's in there. Uh, but you can see it's in the staminate phase right now. There's pollen and you got the uh, the stigma is already closed up. The stigma is up top on that column and the uh, anthers are down below. You can see the anthers. There's no filament. They're just sessile on that, that column, that gynostemium. Again, the stigma is closed up. That fruit has already been pollinated, but the anthers are putting pollen out there. And there was only one little guy, one little fly in there and he's he's gone now. So it's a senescent it's a post mature. That thing would have matured into a big fruit, but uh, you can see there's still plenty of flowers out there. And then, not to be outdone, we got another Aristolochia species, Aristolochia grandiflora, which has one of the most ornate flowers, and it even smells absolutely terrible. It smells like rotting meat. You can see it's got a little lip in there, too. Definitely, this guy's definitely going to be attracting some flies. Native to Central America, you can see it's got a couple in fruit right there couple fruits dangling which each each one of those little uh each one of those little lobes having i don't know 30 seeds inside so probably 120 seeds total got like a beige color to them let's cut this guy open and see what's going on inside let me just split this guy open oh we got a couple they're hanging up by the entrance they're waiting to be let out Ugh, are they dead oh no they're all dead no there's a couple you got a couple still alive in there they died in there and then there's that uh, gynostemium up top. You can see that little column up top. There you go. Cut it open a little bit more. That's in a staminate phase too. Releasing pollen already been fertilized. Was already in the female phase. The stigma up top already closed up. The fruit's going to be maturing. And there's uh, pollen all out and ready. Look, look. Hey, we're closed up, buddy. It's done. Get out of there. God, it really does smell bad. And again, that speckling pattern to mimic rotting meat for its fly pollinators. How about that? Anyway, very interesting plant, very interesting pollination system. And Aristolochia uh, is all over the world at low latitudes. There's a, there's a lot in the, the uh, neotropical areas, but you get some in Asia too. Anyway, that's all I got. Have a great day. Go fuck yourself, buddy.